Capitol Reserve Chairman Janet Yellen heads to Capitol Hill for a second day of hearings today, this time testifying in front of the Senate Banking Committee. Yesterday, the Fed Chair addressed the state of the economy and the, her intention to raise interest rates before the House Financial Services Committee meeting. The economy will continue to expand at a moderate pace over the next couple of years, with the job market strengthening somewhat further and inflation rising to 2%. This judgment reflects our view that monetary policy remains accommodative. The committee continues to expect that the evolution of the economy will warrant gradual increases in the federal funds rate over time to achieve and maintain maximum employment and stable prices. Speaking of inflation, we just got the producer price index added. It was up one-tenth of a percent, or perhaps lack of. Joining us right now, Grant's interest rate observer founder, Jim Grant, in the studio. Jim, it's great to see you. Good morning, Rio. Thank you so much for joining us. Oh, yes. What, what did you make of Janet Yellen yesterday? Well, I think that uh, she's never going to get into trouble saying things as bland as the things she said. Uh, but, you know, one ought to stop and ask the whys of some of her statements. For example, she says that inflation is worrying because it's too low. Why is that? I mean, why do we need 2% inflation? We never know why we need it. We are told we do need it. Um, this country enjoyed, or I guess as we would say today, suffered five consecutive years of inflation of less than 2% from 1960 to 1965. Uh, the earth turned, America prospered, and now we are in a position where the Fed it feels it has to generate the credit that will levitate prices on average Two percent. Hmm. Well, the, the, the consequences of that attempt to raise up prices on Main Street have, you know, the, the consequences spill over into Wall Street. We have a, a wonderful bull market that is that is financed to a great degree, it seems to me, by these exertions of the Federal Reserve, and it'll be very hard to stop exerting because the world has become accustomed to them. Do, do you agree with her assessment that the economy is 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 moving? growing enough to warrant well, yeah. higher interest rates? Well, I think the, the world expects the central banks to try to do something to normalize rates. Um, uh, what Janet Yellen never fails to do these days is to, is to add that uh, if there's a stumble or a misstep, the Fed will do everything it can to reinstitute the policies that it seeks to escape from. Um, you know, the, the, so we have a uh, an abnormal balance sheet of the Federal Reserve. We, the Fed today owns 18% of the country's first mortgages. It owns 24% wow. of all government securities in the hands of the public. This is an immense $4.5 trillion edifice of a balance sheet. And the Fed wants out of it. But, you know, the old Wall Street joke is, I'm going to sell, and the, the question, to whom? Right. Who's going to so, buy it? Right. So that is the question before the House. The, another question before the House is, the Fed seeks to raise the federal funds rate, its target interest rate. It seeks to raise this at a time when, as Janet Yellen herself says, that the economy could be weaker than she expects or it could be stronger than she expects. In any case, the rate of growth in everyday dollars, what we call nominal GDP, is very weak by historical standards. Auto sales are weakening. Tax receipts. Tax. Yeah. So they're, I mean, you never know. I mean, Janet Yellen is quite right to be humble about the future, insofar as she is humble. That's that's wise. Uh, but they are they are they are tightening. Uh, other central banks are joining them at a time when it's not at all clear that the that that the, the economy or the financial markets really need higher interest rates. Yeah, I, it would be lovely if we had them many years ago, but I'm not sure if now is the moment. I think you make a really good point. And well, you should point out that today the Bank of Canada raised interest rates, also had a pretty hawkish assessment of the economy in Canada. So you're seeing this really across the world in terms of this idea to take back the monetary stimulus, this free money that was put in place. Let me ask you about this wind down of the balance sheet, four and a half trillion dollar balance sheet. Are you worried that as they wind down, as they start trying to sell these these securities, as you say, to whom, that it's going to be a disruption in the market? Yes, I, I think that's a real possibility. Jamie Dimon uh, was very good on this the other day. He said, uh, never before have we have we had a balance sheet so big and, and never before have we tried to shrink it. And you can't be glib about the uh, about the, the consequences of this. I think the Fed uh, is, is, is being happy, clappy about it and wants us to think that there'd be no problem. Uh, but, you know, the, the, it's, a, it's a big world and an interconnected one. The, uh, the Federal Reserve coughs and maybe somebody in China sneezes. Uh, Chinese finance is very precarious. The Chinese currency, the renminbi, has been weakening 
And if the Fed were to follow through, and it's not at all clear, by the way, the Fed will follow through, but the Fed did follow through by shrinking its balance sheet, which is a tightening measure, and if it did raise its funds rate, perhaps uh, China is going to become even more precarious. So as Jamie Dimon suggested, the, uh, the, this is a maneuver never before attempted, and we can't be dogmatic. We must be humble about the consequences of, of what it may entail. I think, I think you make a really important point. What, what would the potential implications be? Like if, if we see China have an impact as the Federal Reserve starts unwinding the balance sheet, would the impact be securities trading down? I mean, what sure, would I, th I think, think it would be a, a financial disruption globally. And uh, this comes at a time when uh, your brother-in-law and sister-in-law both are short what we call on Wall Street the VIX, which is the index that measures volatility. volatility. And so it's a very uh, popular trade to, to expect that volatility will continue to be uh, snoozing. It's been seemingly asleep for a long time. But you say if the Fed starts unwinding and uh, we see an impact to China, we'll see volatility come back in a nanosecond. We will see volatility come back. We might see securities prices in many different departments of the capital markets decline. Um, but, you know, um, uh, the, this, this gets back to the addendum that the Fed is, is, is attaching to all of these pledges to, to tighten and to shrink its balance sheet. Um, you know, the, the press release of a couple of weeks ago ended, the Fed's position paper a couple of weeks ago on, ab, on, on normalizing its finances ended with a big fat paragraph describing how quickly and how effectively it would re-enter these policies that it is now talking about exiting. You do want to begin what is normal and wow. what is abnormal. So the Fed it says it will normalize and then says, by the way, if something happens, anything happens, we will re-abnormalize. Wow. What, what do you do as an investor at this point? No yes, one... yes, you do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what do you do? I mean, how do you allocate capital? Well, okay. So look at fixed income, look I'm, at equities. What I'm you... going to give you an observation from history. Okay. This was 10 years ago this week that, uh, that Chuck Prince of Citicorp was quoted by the FT, he was in Japan. He said, so when he bowed? When the, when the music's playing, you have to get up a dance. Okay, so... What happens when the music stops? Well, I think, I think, I think he speaks indirectly, to be sure, to, uh, to the seeming necessity of being in there and playing. We, investors feel they have to be in there. Stocks go up, your neighbor's getting richer. Annoyingly, your neighbor's getting richer. Um, uh, valuations uh, seemingly have never been less relevant because most of the time, most investors these days don't pay attention to them. ETFs, index funds, what have you. Valuations, they say, are irrelevant. <coughs> Maria, they're never irrelevant. So valuations are historically high, interest rates historically low. The Fed and its brethren or sisterin are now pledging to tighten in a world that has not seen such things in 10 years. There may be more risk than reward in these markets. I think you're telling me to raise cash right now and not yeah, too much in terms of... It's, kind uh, of a, it's, it's, it's not a very TV thing to say, but that's what I'm saying, Maria. Raise, raise cash right now. <laughs> yeah. You're worried, Jim. No, I'm not worried. I'm, 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 I'm journalistically hopeful of better copy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's great to see you.